الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أجمعين محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم The first subject about uh, the prayer and we discussed before about Adhan and Iqama and we reached up to the issue 951 uh, obligatory acts relating to prayer here we start with uh, describing how the a prayer should be done there are a lot of details some are minor details many people may not understand it properly and might do some acts which invalidate their prayer so it is important to study that in detail. There are 11 obligatory acts for prayers. The first one is niyat or the intention to pray. The second one, qiyam or standing erect at position of standing before going to ruku'. And the third one is takbiratul ihram, which means saying Allahu Akbar while commencing the prayers. The fourth one is ruku' bowing. The fifth one is uh, sajdatain, the two prostration. The seven is qira'at, recitation of Surah Al-Hamd and other surahs. Eighth is dhikr, prescribed recitation in ruku' and in sujood. And then tashahud, bearing witness uh, after completing the sajda of the second Rak'at and the last rak'at, and then salam, the salutation. Then uh, two more points, those were acts of saying or acting here. They say tertib in sequence means uh, all the actions of the prayer should be one after the other, not a long gap in between. And mu'alat, to perform the different acts of prayer in regular succession. So this should be one after the other, tertib and mu'alat. They should be one right away after the other without a long gap. Now each point of them will be discussed in detail. So we come about uh, issue 951. said some of the obligatory acts of prayers are elemental or rukun. Rukun means fundamental or elemental or important thing. Why it is called uh, rukun or uh, elemental because uh, if is added intentionally the prayer will be void uh, so one has to be careful about adding or deleting any one of them hence a prayer is become void hence a person who does not offer them whether intentionally or by mistakes his prayers become void some other obligatory acts of prayers are not elemental. Uh, therefore, if they are omitted by mistake, the prayers does not become void. So these arkan are very important to know them, to remember them, uh, because adding or deleting any one of them will make the prayer void. The five elemental part of the prayer is one, intention, the niyat, well, without intention, if you pray, naturally, the prayer for what? Not clear. Second is takbiratul ihram, to say Allahu Akbar. That should not be added or deleted, forgotten. Third is standing before ruku' And fourth, uh, ruku' And fifth is two sajdas. So the tashahud and dhikr and qara'at and other things are not elemental, but only these five are elemental. Now we come to a uh, little explanation. Any addition made to these elemental acts, Rukni act, intentionally will render the prayers void. If the addition is done by mystic, the prayers does not become void except when a ruku' is added or more than two sajdas are offered in one rak'at. Here, Atullah Sistani says, if intentionally you make ruku'a twice, or sujood, 
تو سجدز توايس بيكون فور سجدة اور تكبيره الاحرام انتشنلي توايس ذا فيرست وان از كوركت ذا سكند وان ويل انفاليديت ذا فيرست وان سو ذا براير ويل بي فويد سو انتشنلي اف ات از دان ذا براير از فويد بات سم اوف ذيم اف ذي ار دان باي ميستيك it will not invalidate the prayer. He said what will invalidate by mistake, even by mistake, if ruku' become two ruku'. I mean one, uh, stand from ruku' and go back again to ruku' by mistake. So that will invalidate the prayer. Or more than two sajdas offered in one rak'at. Uh, so it is not in two rak'at, mistake. In one rak'at, more than two sajdas, again, will invalidate the prayer. Uh, we come to the first one, niyat or the intention. What is the niyat? And there are a lot of details about it. Issue 952. A person should offer prayers with the intention of qurbat. That is complying with the orders of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not, however, necessary that he should make the niyat pass through his mind or should for example utter I am offering four rak'ats of door prayer qurbatan illallahi ta'ala actually intention is naturally important for any act and our intention we are praying for what purpose naturally we know that it is for sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala almighty Allah ordered us to pray and we are fulfilling our duty toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is the niyyat. Uh, now if somebody is confused, he stands to offer the prayer and without knowing what he is doing, because he has some problem, he is thinking on some, some certain issue, he is under stress, uh, and he is not really having niyyat. Naturally, his prayer without intention is void, not right. Now the question, intention, how it comes? Should I pass it in mind, or should I say it by tongue? He said, no, both of them are not necessary. Saying by tongue, for example, if I want to offer Maghrib prayer, I say by tongue, I offer Maghrib prayer three rak'ahs qurbatan illallahi ta'ala. He said, no, that is not necessary to say it by tongue. Okay, I will not say it by tongue, but should these, this sentence, I mean these words, come in my mind, that I am offering Maghrib prayer just in my mind. So even that is not necessary. So then what is the intention? You say the intention that you know what you are doing. That is the intention. If somebody asks you why you are standing toward Qibla, what are you doing? You will not say, oh, I don't know. I was confused. I came out of my bedroom and I stood here. I don't know. You will not say that. You said, well, I stand because oh, now it is Maghrib and I have to offer my Maghrib prayer. So, I mean, when you leave your house for your work, for example, in the morning, you will not say that I leave my house from here and go to my office because it is my duty to reach there at 9 o'clock. You will not pass it in your mind. But you know what you are doing. If somebody catch you in the way, they talk, oh, where are you going? You say, I'm going to the office. So you know what you are doing. Well, if you are just roaming around in town with your car, if your friend is there and stop you and he said, okay, where are you going? You said, well, I have no purpose. I'm just roaming around. So there, there is no clear intention, roaming around. But when you go to the office, you know what you are doing. You left, let us say, 8.30 because you know it will take you about half an hour. So by 9 o'clock you have to be there. So you left it. But you did not put it in mind that, I am leaving the house for sake of reaching the office. No, that will not, but you know what you are doing. They say this is intention. Intention, in Arabic say it is qasdul fa'l. Intention is you have to have proper aim of what you are doing. You are clear with purpose what you are doing. You know what you are doing. Not that you say, I don't know. I'm here. I, I was confused. I, Suddenly I came here. I don't know why I'm here. No. You know why you are here. You know why you are standing in front of Qibla. You know it is Maghrib now. 
It is not dhuhr, it is not morning, so your niyat is maghrib, so that is the intention. Issue 953, if a person stands for dhuhr prayers or for asr prayers with niyat to offer four rak'ats without specifying whether it is dhuhr or asr prayers, his prayers are void. Similarly, if he wants to offer a qada dhuhr prayer at the time of dhuhr, he should specify whether he is offering the dhuhr prayer of the day or the qada. Sometimes people are in hurry, and he come and he stand, he know dhuhr and asr are now, but he is not clear, is it dhuhr or asr? But he said, let me start, and then I will think which one of them, because both are same. Dhor and Asr, both are four, four rakat. So at the beginning of the prayer, he is not clear what he is offering prayer. He said that his intention is not correct. So at the beginning, he should have intention and should be aware he is offering which prayer. Is it Dhor? He should say Dhor. Is it Asr? Asr. Well, is it Qadha of the yesterday? He was sick or he was sleeping and he did not pray now he is doing Qadha or no? It is Prayer of today, Dhuhr of today, Ada, which one of them? So he should be clear. If he's not clear, naturally the prayer is not correct. Issue 954 A person should be conscious and aware of his niyat from the beginning of the prayers till its end. Hence, if during the prayers, he becomes so lost that he is unable to say what he is doing if asked his prayers is void. You see, sometimes one in the prayer, well, his mind may be thinking in something else, not on the prayer, but still his intention is the prayer. That if by chance somebody asks him, well, he will not reply because he says, I am a time of prayer. Though his mind may be diverted, he is not thinking about the prayer fully, not with full concentration. But at least he knows that he is offering prayer. But sometimes he is so lost, his thinking is so deep, that he stops and he doesn't know what he is doing. So if somebody asks him, what are you doing? You say, oh, I don't know. I was thinking something else. So then he looks around and says, oh, uh, it looks I was offering prayer, but now I am out of the prayer. So you see, his intention did not continue. Maybe at the beginning he has intention of the prayer. He started with a prayer. He prayed one rak'at. He prayed two rak'ats. But later on, he was so deeply involved in thinking or concentration or something else that he lost his continuation with the prayer. So you see, his prayer will be void. That is, you say the prayer, the intention should be from beginning to the end. Issue 955, a person should offer prayers to carry out the orders of the Almighty Allah only. So if a person prays to show off to the people, his prayers is void. It will be void even if he couples the intention of showing off with the performance of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here, Riya or the show naturally will invalidate the prayer. Because he said, intention should be qurbatan ila Allah ta'ala, for sake of Allah. Now if you pray that other people will see him and say, oh, that man is a good man, religious man, he offered his prayer. Um, naturally, his prayer is not for sake of Allah, for sake of people to praise him. Now he might mix both. He said, the people will praise me and I will please Allah. Together, both of them said, even that is not stupid. Because Allah will not accept any partner in any deed. You know, so he will reject that. So it should be purely for sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why some people, if they are not sure of themselves, they avoid praying in front of people. They go in a room or somewhere alone so that there will be nobody there to look to them so that Riyah will not come. Issue 956, if a person offers a wajib or mustahab part of prayers for the sake of any of anyone other than Allah, his prayers are 
void if that intention affects the whole a prayer or uh, redressing it is not possible without invalidating the prayer similarly if for the purpose of showing off one prays at a special place like the mosque or at a special time like the prime time or in a special manner like joining a prayer of jama'at congregational prayer his prayers will also be void you see here if somebody has a show about wajib part of the prayer naturally will be missing but if it was mustahab if that mustahab is invalidated, the prayer will not be invalid, you know, because that mustahab is mustahab. So you see, if it affects the rest of the prayer, will invalidate all the prayer. And if he can do it again, then he can uh, cover that, you know. He said, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, in very beautiful sounds so the people will hear him, but then he realized, well, this is a show, and then he repeated Again, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Let us say with a lower tone. And the second one was fully for sake of Allah. He said his intention could be covered here and his prayer is all right. There is no missing part of the prayer. But if Riyah for sake of show was even in some part and that part passes naturally will affect his prayer. Now he said not only about saying or proper ruku and sujood, even if you go to place of a prayer for sake of showing people. You go to the mosque, then the people say he's very religious, he come every day to the mosque. Not for sake of Allah, for sake of show to people. Or when there is congregational prayer, he stand in the front so that the people will praise him. He said, oh, what a good man, he's always in the front line of the prayer. And again, that is not allowed. Or he try to pray on time because somebody looking to him or a guest is there otherwise if a guest was not there he may pray one hour two hours after the prime time you know but because the guest and then the guest should not tell that he prayed uh, so uh, he so the all becomes show for others not for sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you say niyat intention has to be properly and completely for sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes it's difficult to keep it not always easy, but one has to be aware of himself so that his intention should be very clear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, that is about the first part. We come to the second part, takbiratul ihram. Takbiratul ihram means saying Allahu Akbar at the beginning of the prayer. Issue 957, to say Allahu Akbar in the beginning of every prayer is obligatory. And one of its rukuns, not only obligatory, it is an elemental part. And it is necessary that every letter and the two words are uttered in a proper succession. It is also necessary that these two words should be pronounced in correct Arabic. If a person pronounces these words incorrectly or utters their translation, it will not be valid. You see, Allahu Akbar, as said at the beginning of the prayer, is obligatory, and it's also one of the fundamental parts or elemental parts of the prayer. So if it is wrong, then all the prayer will be void. So it's important to be said. Now, how to say it? He said, first has to be said in Arabic. It's a translation to say, Allah is great, is not sufficient. You have to say it, Allahu Akbar. And then the two words should be pronounced properly. Allahu Akbar. Some people do not pronounce it properly. Say Allahu Akbar. Say Hamza of A Akbar. That some of the people do not make it clear. Say Allahu Akbar. This is wrong. Allahu Akbar is not right. Should be Allahu Akbar. Hamza A of Akbar should be 
clear. And many people are not aware of it. And they do it by mistake. They say, Allah Akbar. So it is very near and they think it's right. Hamza is not clear, so that is not right. So you say these two words, word of Allah and word of Akbar, should be clearly, rightly pronounced. When you say Allahu Akbar, A of Hamza should be very clear and rightly said. If it is not said rightly, then the prayer is void. We come to issue 958. The recommended precaution is that one should not join takbiratul ihram of the prayers with any preceding recitations, like iqamah or with the dua which he may be reciting before the takbir. Well, here he said recommended. Some ulama may say obligatory. What they mean in Arabic word, if you are continuing in talk, you can join the two sentences together. Like, for example, in reciting Surah Al-Hamd, you can say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, each sentence separate, or you can join both the sentences. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmuddin. You can join all the sentences together by making the vowels apparent. No, here it says about takbiratul ihram, if you completed your iqamah, iqamah says, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, for takbiratul ihram, he said, no, should not be joined. When you finish iqamah, you stop, and you say, Allahu Akbar, stop, and then say, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Okay, we say, Allahu Akbar, wa Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, possible, he said, as recommended, some ulama said, as obligatory precaution, should not be joined with any sentence. Neither sentence before, nor sentence after. So it should be Allahu Akbar alone, and said independently. <coughs> Issue 959, if a person wishes to join Allahu Akbar with a recitation to follow, like with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, he should pronounce the R of Akbar as Akbaru, Allahu Akbaru, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. However, the recommended precaution is that he should not join it with any other thing in obligatory prayers. Uh, you see, one of the rules in Qiraat, uh, which will come also, uh, that if you stop at the end of the sentence, always the vowel will be sukun. There is no a, a, or o. It will be sukun. Like you say, Allahu Akbar. Akbar R is, there is no a, a. But if you join, then whatever grammatically is its vowel, you have to make it clear. Because Allahu Akbaru, dhamma is there. So if you have to join it with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, you cannot say Allahu Akbar, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. No, you are joining. So you say, Allahu Akbaru Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So the vowel Akbaru should be clear because you are joining it. Though he said, as a recommended precaution, should not be joined with any other sentence. Issue 960, it is necessary that when a person pronounces takbiratul ihram, his body is steady if he pronounces takbiratul ihram intentionally. With his body is in motion, his takbir is void. One of the important things at the time of the prayer, that when you recite any recitation, your body should be stable. Stability of the body is one of the important points that should be always remembered in the prayer. At time of qiraat uh, while standing, at time of ruku' when you recite dhikr of ruku', when you go to sujood, dhikr of sujood, when you sit for tashahud or salam, all the body should be stable. Now when one say Allahu Akbar, again here, his body has to be stable. Some people say Allahu Akbar and they turn to the front and back, you know. Allahu Akbar. No, that is wrong. Not possible. 
So it's a move that is not allowed. You have to stop, your body should be stable, and you say, Allahu Akbar, with two hands, Allahu Akbar, so the body is stable. But I've seen some people, like, I don't know, they are emotional, so they want to enjoy it, so they move the body back and forth, uh, so that is not allowed. So the body has to be stable. So one of the conditions, the hands are raised up. You can bring the hand down, but the body, the trunk, should be stable. Say, Allahu Akbar, and the body is in its stability. So that is one of the conditions of takbiratul ihram. Okay, issue 961, a person should pronounce takbiratul ihram Surah, dhikr, and dua in such a manner that you should at least hear the whisper. And if he cannot hear it because of deafness or too much noise, he should pronounce them in such a manner that he would be able to hear if there was no impediment. Now, here we say recitations or qira'a is not just thinking by mind. Some people say, we will not pronounce it by tongue. I think only by mind, I say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, just by mind, Alhamdulillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, is all, I run it in mind. Like when you read a book, you do not pronounce it. You read the book only with your, your eyes or with your mind you read. You, you will not pronounce it. See, so like that is not possible, not allowed. The prayer is void. So one has to recite. If it is loud recitation like Surah Maghrib and, and Isha and morning prayer in the first and second rak'at, so naturally it has to be loud, not loud shouting, loud if somebody hear you, you said you are speaking loudly. Well, even if it is soft, say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is loud, because it's clear. And if it is Dhur and Asr prayer, uh, that uh, uh, first and second rak'at and always third and fourth rak'at are whispering. Whispering means again you have to to say it so that it is uh, clear that you hear yourself. Now in case you have some deafness or the place is too much busy, you do not hear yourself. If somebody put his, no, his ear near your mouth, he hear you whispering. So it is Mentioned like, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Malik yawm al-Din. So it is recitation, but in whispering. So though it is not loud, but he hear himself, and he is talking, he is mentioning it. Not that only in mind you say, okay, I, I know, just he move his tongue without talking, and he run the words by mind, so no, that is not allowed, because there is called qira'a. Qira'a means reading, not only reading by tongue, you know, not only reading by, by mind. Okay. Issue 962, if a person is dumb or has some defect in his tongue, rendering him unable to pronounce Allahu Akbar, he should pronounce it in whatever manner he can. And if he cannot pronounce it at all, he should say it in his mind and should make a suitable sign with his finger for takbir and should also move his tongue if he can. The same rule applies to a person who is born dumb. See, some people are having paralysis so they cannot speak, their tongue will not move properly. So what they will do, you say they should say whatever they can. If they can say it, Allahu Akbar, properly, fine. If cannot be said properly, only half a clear still, well that is their ability, they have no option. If they cannot talk at all, complete parasite that they cannot talk at all, so with their uh, hand or with their finger they point out that they are saying Allahu Akbar uh, and if any sound to come out, if that is possible, uh, not very clear Allahu Akbar, but any sound so that they should say 
So this is if somebody is dumb by uh, disease or sickness. And if somebody was born as dumb, he should be told that he should say Allahu Akbar. Naturally, people know how to communicate with him. And he will say Allahu Akbar. He cannot uh, say it by tongue at all. Uh, but he should have the intention of Allahu Akbar and say it in, in the way which is possible and pointing out by his fingers that he is saying Allahu Akbar that Takbiratul Ihram and if well his tongue and lips can move to say Allahu Akbar only that movement he may uh, show that movement though the sound may not be clear but the moment Allahu Akbar, you see the lips are moving, so might, he might be able to do that. Uh, so in short, as much as he can, he should do. If he cannot, okay, then he may point out, but if he can, as much as he can. Issue 963, it is recommended that after the takbirat al-ihram, a person should say this, Ya Muhsinu qad attack al Wa qad amarta al Muhsin an yatajawaz ala al Musi, anta al Muhsin wa ala al Musi, bihaqqa Muhammad wa ala Muhammad, salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad, wa tajawaz an kabihi ma ta'lamu minni. Well, its translation is mentioned, O oh Lord, who are beneficent, beneficent, this sinful has come before you and you have ordered the charitable to show indulgence to the sinner. So all that in Arabic, if he can say it, that is recommended, is not wajib. If somebody can remember it and say it, that is mustahab. Now issue 964, it is mustahab for a person pronouncing the first takbir of the prayers and also the takbirs which occur during the prayers to raise his hands parallel to his ears. Uh, you know, when you say Allahu Akbar, some people will raise their hand up to the shoulder, Allahu Akbar. Some people raise their hand above their head, they say Allahu Akbar. He said, no, what is recommended, the hands are parallel to the ears, you know. So you raise it up to this much. That is, of course, recommended, even if one do not raise his hand, his prayer is all right. If you say Allahu Akbar without raising the hand, if he has a problem and he cannot raise, well, it is mustahab. But this mustahab to be done at time of takbiratul ihram, to raise your hand, which the hand is parallel to the ear, and you say Allahu Akbar. And any takbir, any other takbir, I mean before ruku', which is recommended uh, after ruku', before sujood, after sujood, any takbir that he say Allahu Akbar, is recommended to you raise your hand near the ears and say Allahu Akbar. So some people in other ruku' they might be lazy. Okay, they may do it, but it is recommended to raise your hand fully and properly near the ears and say Allahu Akbar. Issue 965, if a person doubts whether he has pronounced Akbirat al-Ihram or not, and if he has started Qiraat, he should ignore his doubt. But if he has not recited anything, he should pronounce the Takbir uh, properly. You see, sometimes one doubt. You say, Allahu Akbar, and then he doubts uh, whether he recited it properly or not. Because he has to be sure of it, then in that case, he should recite it again. But if he recited Allahu Akbar and started Qur'an, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and then the doubt at the middle of Qur'an came, he said, this doubt has no value because you have passed the place of that. That's a general rule. So the place of Takbirat al-Haram has been passed by uh, Surah Al-Hamd, so now you should not uh, uh, f mm, take care of the doubt, you should ignore that, and that has no value. So if you are at the place, you have not started Qiraat, naturally you have to be sure that your Qiraat is alright. Maybe 
if your qiraat takbirat al-ihram was all right but well you are not fully sure it's better to tear in your face so at least the first takbirat al-ihram is void because if it was all right and you have uh, obsession and you said it is not and you repeat second takbirat al-ihram become two and you say two will uh, make the prayer void so the first one is better uh, you turn so that the first one is already void because you turn it from Qibla and you say it again to be sure that it is right. You know. Issue 965, uh, 966. If after having pronounced Takbir al Ihram, a person doubts whether he has pronounced it correctly, he should ignore his doubt at any stage. Uh, you see, some people have that uh, doubt. In the issue 965, if he has doubt, he said it or no. In this issue 966, if he doubt whether it is right or not. See, if has doubt that he said Takbir al-Ihram or not, naturally he has to say it. But if he has doubt, if he said it, but, well, some people are um, always in, in doubt uh, whether he said it right or not. He said in this case he should not care for that, whether he started the Qur'at, Surah Al-Hamd, or no. So, just to correct, the thing and elaborate in issue 965, if he has doubt that he said Takbir al-Ihram or not. You know, if a person doubts whether he has pronounced, he said it. But here, in issue 966, if he doubt, it was said properly and now pronounced correctly. So if he doubt about correctness of it, he should not care about it. But if he has doubt about saying it or not, well, naturally he should decide that he has not said unless he is sure that it was said. Uh, well, it is sufficient up to here. Inshallah, we'll continue in the next session. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa alihi al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alihi Muhammad wa ajjil faraja.